So in this lesson, let's go ahead and use MySQL data source and try to create the dashboard which you are seeing right now on the screen. So before we go ahead and create a data source connection, we will need MySQL access. So what you can do is you can go to virtuallabs.online and here you can just go ahead, scroll to MySQL and you can subscribe for MySQL instance. You are going to get a database detail and it's going to be completely free. Uh, by the way, you will have to log in. So I'm already logged in. That's the reason I'm able to subscribe. So if you are new to virtual labs, you can go ahead and sign in using Google or maybe you can go ahead and create your account. Now, once you subscribe to the lab, you are going to get the lab details in the email or otherwise you can just go to my labs and here you should be able to see the instance for example this is the latest one which we have just created right now it is showing in pending state as you can see it can take up to 90 seconds for the lab to be created so once the lab is created basically we are going to get a mysql database access and then what we are going to do is we are going to create a product table and in the product table we are going to insert some product data and then we are also going to create sales table and then we are going to randomly insert some items in sales table and this is a stored procedure so i'm just going to run it on a scheduled interval so that's why you can see some scheduled interval is turned on by the way this is available on github i'm going to give the link of this github as well so let's go ahead here and refresh it hopefully we have got the details yes we have got the details so here you can see we can log in using this url just go ahead right click here and open it in a new tab so here you can see we are now having access to my sql db we are going to go ahead and select my database and then we are going to click on sql now here you can just go ahead copy paste all of these queries one by one so let's go ahead create a table so i'm just going to copy it paste it here and we can probably just copy everything and run it once so let's go ahead and copy this insert product data as well and let's paste it here let's give a few new lines and let's go ahead copy this create sales table as well let's go ahead paste it hit enter a couple of times let's go ahead create random sales entry in the table now this is going to run every one minute so every one minute it is going to create some new entry now in case you are already using or you are already having access to some production database data in that case you may not need to use it okay so that's all we need uh, this is just a select query this is something which we are going to use in grafana this is not something which we need as of now so let's go ahead and run this by clicking on go now you can see everything executed successfully so what it has done is it has created a product table and sales table and it has also created a stored procedure here you can see stored procedure is called insert random sales and it has also created a scheduled event which is called insert sales event and this is going to run every one minute so basically every one minute we should be able to see some new data being inserted in sales table if i click on sales table right now you can see right now we have one entry and if i click on products you can see we have around 12 entries available in products now let's move on to grafana and then we are going to go to connections then click on add new connections and here we need to search for mysql now click on mysql and click on add new data source here you can give it any name let's go ahead and give it name of grafana mysql demo and here we need to provide IP address of the database followed by the port. So let's go ahead. This is the IP address. I'm just going to go ahead and paste this IP address. Then we need to use colon and the port which is 3306. This is the default port. So there is no port name mentioned here. So that's why we are just going to go ahead and use the default port. Now database name is called my database. You can see we are using my database. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my database here as well. In the username password, you can see the username password available here. So let's go ahead and use this username and password now we can scroll down and click on save and test okay so database connection is okay we can now go ahead and start building a dashboard so either you can click here on build a dashboard or you can just come here and then click on new dashboard uh, this is your browser asking for whether you want to save the password we are not interested in saving the password so let's go ahead click on close now let's go ahead click on add visualization and here we are going to select the data source which we created so we created a data source with the name grafana mysql demo so we are going to go ahead and use this now once you do that you can see the database name available here and here you can see the tables which we created so we have products and sales table so first of all let's go ahead and click on product and then once you click on columns you can see all the available columns now in our products we have these columns available so if you want to select all the columns you can just click on star and now here you can see in the preview grafana 
Fana query panel is automatically generating my SQL query which is going to run in the backend. Now let's go ahead click on run query. Now you can see in our products we do not have a time field that is why it is not able to show it in a time series. So we are going to go ahead and select a table and once we do that you can see product information is being shown here in the tabular format. Now let's go ahead change the title to products and we are also going to go ahead click on overrides and let's go ahead add some overrides on this price. So let's go ahead click on add field override field with name we are going to select price and we are going to probably create a cell type override and this cell type we can make it maybe from auto let's go ahead and change it to gauge and this is how it's gonna look like now you see some information is coming in green while others are coming in red color this is coming from threshold if you are already watching my previous lessons you you are already going to be aware of this but let's say if you want to show everything only with single color in that case you can go ahead and remove this threshold and if you want to choose any other color go ahead and choose any other color so for example we can go ahead and stick to this color okay so this is our override one now if you want to create other overrides you can do that as well for example we can go ahead and click on add override let's go ahead and click on field with name and we are going to choose price again and then in the add override property let's go ahead and change this standard option units and here we are going to select currency and let's select this one dollar so you can see now this is how the price is being shown this looks okay let's go ahead click on apply now let's go ahead and play a little bit with sales table so we are going to go ahead and click on add visualization again and now we are going to choose sales table now in our sales table if you just go ahead here on the database and then click on sales you can see that our sales table do have a timestamp which is called sale underscore timestamp and it also has quantity how many items are being sold and it also has product id so product id is basically a relationship or related to this product and then we can also see sale price okay now let's go ahead now here in columns let's go ahead and probably select quantity we just want to see how many items are being sold over a specific timeline so that's why we we are choosing quantity now once you click on run query again you can see we are seeing that date time field is missing so we are going to insert one more column so let's go ahead click on plus and we have to choose this sales timestamp now let's go ahead click on run query again and now you can see this time series is being shown now i'm just going to go ahead and select last 15 minutes and here you can see number of items being sold let's change the title to number of items being sold trend line and let's click on apply uh, probably we can just resize it now one thing which we can do here is you can see the list is pretty long so let's go ahead and enable pagination here so i'm just going to go ahead edit it and we are going to enable pagination now let's go ahead click on apply so you can see we are able to see three items and we can move to next pages to see the remaining items now let's say we want to see what is the total number of items which has been sold as of now in the selected time interval so let's go ahead click on add and click on visualization now in the table we know that our sales items are stored here in sales table so we are going to select that and in the columns we are going to select quantity and we want to apply some aggregation so basically we want to see some of all the quantities being sold so let's go ahead select some and let's click on run query so here you, again we cannot use this time series because we are not selecting any time field we just want to see total item being sold so i'm just going to use stat let's click on stat let's click on apply now let's say we are interested in total revenue which is being generated as of now so we can so let's go ahead and add that panel let's go ahead click on visualization and then in the table we are going to select sales and here in the columns we are interested in sales price this time we are going to do some of this sales price and then we can go ahead and select stat click on run query and we can see this is the total revenue which has been generated as of now now we can go ahead and of course change the standard units we can go ahead and make it currency and you can see this is being shown in red color this is again coming from threshold so we can go ahead and remove this threshold and we can keep the base color of maybe i think the green one looks okay in the title let's go ahead and call it total revenue and let's go ahead click on apply so this is how it's gonna look like so as of now we are using grafana query editor to prepare the query but let's say if you have your own custom query you can use that as well so to demonstrate that i'm i'm going to use this query top product sold let's go ahead copy this and we are going to go to add visualization again once you select the data source you can move here to the code by default you are going to be in builder so let's go ahead move to code and here you can go ahead and paste the code let's go ahead click on run query now let's go ahead and see what is the visualization which are being suggested so here you can see these are the visualization which are being suggested uh, probably this time we are going to go ahead and use pie chart and here you can see percentage of each product which is being sold so let's go ahead and call it top product sold and click on apply.
and again there is one more query which is revenue generated so far which we have actually already done so here you can see the total revenue which has been generated so far and in this case actually we used query builder but we can also use custom queries so let's go ahead click on visualization and we can go ahead just copy this query and we can of course go ahead move to code and let's go ahead paste the query here click on run query and in this case since we are using timestamp that's the reason you are able to see this timestamp as well now we are going to go ahead change the visualization to stat total we have generated revenue of $613 in last 15 minutes and here you can also see a trend line so let's go ahead and probably change the title again revenue generated in selected time interval so this is how it's gonna look like of course we can go ahead and realign them so we are going to sum up here i guess you already got good idea on how to connect to mysql database and show the visualization using grafana